6 p.m. Synopsis of President Brigham Young's Address to the Brethren Selected to Go on a Mission, delivered in the Tabernacle, Sunday evening, October 9, 1853, and reported by Brother W. Woodruff from memory. I have a few remarks to make to the missionaries. I consider all the elders of this church missionaries, and I will here say that every man who is clothed with the priesthood can magnify it while cultivating the earth, or following any other useful occupation, as well as in preaching the gospel to the nations. For while an elder is diligent, and by his labor produces wheat, corn, and other articles for the sustenance of man and beast, he is administering life and salvation. An elder who magnifies his calling has a right to bless his land, his fields, his crops, his flocks and herds, his wives and children. He has a right to heal the sick, and cast evil spirits out of man or beast. If any of his family or animals are sick, he has the right to lay hands upon him, and heal them and to do all things which are right and lawful, but a man without the priesthood has not the legal right to do these things. Now how is it with you, ye elders of Israel? Do you magnify your calling in all these things, or do you take the name of God in vain, and curse, lie, and steal a little? And when the devil gets into your animals, do you partake of the same spirit, and go to fighting them, or do you cast the devil out of them? I leave you to judge. When you first received the gospel, and the light of eternal truth beamed upon your understandings, would you have then have cursed, swore, stolen, lied, or done any evil? No, these acts would have caused you to shudder. But when your light begins to fade, and you walk a long time in the twilight, you begin to stumble a little, and after a time you cannot commit much evil and sleep easily over it. It is time for such to cry unto God to have mercy unto them. Were you going on a mission to the opposite portions of the globe, and about to leave all, with no one to lean upon but God, you would seek unto him all the time. And when your missions are given to you near home, if you cease to trust in God and to call upon his name with, with the same diligence as you would in a foreign mission, you will do but little, if any good, and your missions will be in vain. And I warn you, that if you do not fulfill this mission with an eye single to the glory of God, and with a view to save Israel and the souls of men, that if your minds are upon your farms, houses, lands, and families, you will find your garments soiled. They will not be spotless. If you do not feel disposed to devote your time and attention to your missions, you had better say, Brethren, please excuse me, for you had better stay at home unless your whole soul is in the work. I wish to say a few words concerning the gathering of Israel, for my mind reaches forward. But when I contemplate the promises of God unto them, and the nations of the earth will accomplish the will of the Lord, without observing his hand in their operations, I will ask, who in Nauvoo would have left that city, provided they could have stayed there? No one. But we were driven to this place to fulfill the will of God. Joseph tried to get access to the remnants of Jacob, and the people greatly feared, lest we should preach the gospel to them. Could we have preached to the Lamanites if we had stayed in Nauvoo? No, we could not. But the people have driven us to a place where we can do much more good than we could have accomplished by remaining in Nauvoo. They have driven us into the midst of the Lamanites, where we can preach the gospel unto them. It has been remarked that I have said there will be a railroad built from the states to this territory by the year 1861. Now all the Union are in favor of a Pacific Railroad, and when it is built our brethren from abroad can come here without walking, as many are now compelled to do. I wish the elders to be faithful upon this mission, and much good will be accomplished, and if any elder is not faithful in the mission assigned to him, let him be chastened, and if he does not repent, let him be cut off from this church. The elders have esteemed it a great privilege to be sent to foreign missions to preach the gospel, and have, in a measure, seemed to forget the poor, ignorant Lamanites who surround us, and are in our midst, at our own doors. They are a remnant of the house of Israel. They are the seed of Abraham, and the Book of Mormon, and all the prophecies concerning that people declare that the, that the gospel shall be preached unto them, and we have to do it, and it is time for us to begin. This work is upon you. You are sent unto the Lamanites, and to accomplish this mission you cannot live in your fine houses as you now do, but you must live with them, teach them, and counsel them in all things, and be on hand to do them all good that lies in your power. If you cannot bring your feelings to a willingness to do this, and cheerfully leave all for the purpose of saving this branch of the house of Israel, you had better say, Let me be excused, and stay at home. Your first business will be to civilize them, teach them to work, and improve their condition by the utmost faith and diligence. Every elder who is now called unto this work 
should immediately commence to learn the Lamanite languages. Go to Brother D. B. Huntington and take lessons, and I hope soon to see a hundred good interpreters where we now have but one. When you go among the Lamanites, deal with them honestly and righteously in all things. Any man who cheats a Lamanite should be dealt with more severely than for cheating a white man. An Indian thinks it no sin to steal, or to kill his enemy, because he has been taught from his childhood that there is no harm in it, but on the contrary, that is a brave act. Not so with the white man. He has been taught from his infancy that it is wicked either to steal or kill, except in self-defense. Walker will not kill a white man, nor go on a stealing expedition to California until he offers sacrifices to his God. Then he thinks he is doing right, and the reason he has not done more in his war on the southern settlements is because he could get no answer from his God. Had it not been for this and the faith of this people, he would have destroyed those settlements before this time. I am sorry that some of our brethren have been killed by the Indians, but am far more so sorry that some of the Indians have been slain by the brethren. I have often said, and I say again, if any person is to be killed for stealing, let that one be a white man and not an Indian, for white men know better, while Indians do not, and you must lay aside your angry feelings towards them and cease wishing to kill them. Now go to work, ye elders of Israel, fulfill your callings, magnify your office, get the spirit of the Lord and of your mission, begin to save the Lamanites and not destroy them, for they are of the house of Israel, and the blessings of God will rest upon you. And I bless you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.